Good morning, girls. Today we're going to start off with chapter nine, which is the digestive system and digestion. Okay, first of all, we're going to look at the structure of the human digestive system. You have learned this in form two before, two years back. Uh, this is a continuation and a with a little bit more detail compared to your form two work. Okay, first of all, let's look at what is the uh structure of the human digestive system. First of all, it is made up of a long and muscular elementary canal. Okay, what is the distinction between elementary canal and the digestive system? Okay, actually, elementary canal is part of the digestive system. We, if we talk about the elementary canal, we're just talking about the tract, that means the pathway from the mouth to the anus. So that means if we're talking about elementary canal, we're just talking about from the mouth here, starts all the way from the mouth down to the esophagus and it goes into the stomach and it goes into the uh, small intestines over here then it connects to the large intestine and the last part will be the rectum and the anus so that is your elementary canal okay but you know as you've learned before there are other organs which are associated with digestion like for example the salivary gland and you also have the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, and so on, and appendix, and so on. So actually, collectively, everything inside there, the elementary canal plus the salivary gland, plus the liver, plus the gallbladder, plus the pancreas, all this will make up the digestive system. Okay, so the elementary canal is just the canal from the mouth to the anus. But if you talk about the digestive system, it includes all the other organs like the salivary gland, the stomach, uh, sorry, the salivary gland, the pancreas, and the liver, and so on. So it is part of the elementary canal is part of the digestive system. Okay, so here the parts of the elementary canal could include the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestines, large intestines, and the anus. And you have other organs, including the liver, gallbladder, and the pancreas. Okay, so I hope you understand the difference between elementary canal and the digestive system. So digestive system is more comprehensive. It includes all the other organs like the liver and the gallbladder and the pancreas. Whereas for the elementary canal, it's just the canal where the food passes through. So the food actually passes through this canal only. It doesn't go into the liver, right? The food does not go into the liver. The food does not go into the gallbladder. So the canal where the food passes through, that will be called the elementary canal. Okay, so first of all, let's look over here. The system, let's look by one by one. Okay, mouth is where the food is chewed and broken into smaller pieces. Then you have this area, which is called the pharynx. Pharynx is the part which actually connects the back of the nose with the back of the mouth. So this part is actually connected. Okay, back of the nose and back of the mouth. So they are, uh, they, whatever food actually can go through to the nose, come out through the nose as well. Okay, and there are some people who actually are able to do this certain feats whereby you they feed a spaghetti through the mouth and they push it up to the nose and it came out through the nose. Okay, so that's quite gruesome, I feel. Uh. Okay, now this pharynx is not to be mistaken with larynx. So there are two different parts. Larynx is actually referring to the voice box. The part, the membrane, the part which actually produces sound when you talk or when you speak. So the larynx is actually at the top of this track here. So it's not the pharynx. Pharynx is the cavity where the nasal cavity joins with the oral cavity behind the, the behind your throat here. That is a pharynx. Okay, so here is the pharynx. Larynx is the actually, in, in normal layman terms, you call it the voice box. Okay, then after food is uh, swallowed, okay, and you have actually have a piece of membrane called the epiglottis, which actually blocks the, blocks the trachea. So your food does not accidentally enter the trachea. It does not go into your lung. If it does, then you will suffocate. Okay, so there's a piece of membrane here called the epiglottis. And it's automatic. Whenever you want to swallow, you find that you will not be able to speak, actually. So if you actually unconsciously do that, that's why you will choke. When you want to swallow and you want to talk at the same time, your automatic mechanism is your epiglottis will open when you want to talk. So when it opens, your food accidentally goes into your trachea, and that's why you have the reflex of actually coughing, which is your choking. Okay, it's actually you're trying to relieve the blockage. 
Okay, now next, let's go to esophagus. So the food that is swallowed will enter the esophagus. So there's no uh, uh, chemical reaction here. Uh, earlier on, I forgot, I skipped the axillary gland. So this is the gland actually that produces saliva. And there will be digestion starting here in the mouth where you have your starch being broken down into maltose. Okay, so it goes down into the esophagus. And the peristalsis uh, action will actually push the food downwards for solid food. For water, you don't really need the peristalsis. Gravity will pull the water down and it enters your stomach quite easily. For food, it has the it needs the peristaltic action to push the semi so the food down into the stomach. Okay, now we enter the stomach. Okay, stomach is the second part. This is where the digestion also will start. Okay, also, a sec not start, it continues. Okay, so first place is your salary again. Digestion starts here. Second uh, place will be your stomach. So the food now enters your stomach. After that, after digestion, I'll go through digestion detail later. Then it enters the next part, which is the beginning of the uh, small intestine. So bear in mind, actually, the small intestine has got three parts. The first part is called duodenum. Duodenum is from the stomach right down to somewhere here. So this part here is your duodenum. Then the middle part is called jejunum. And the last part is called the ileum. So the ileum here is where you will have complete digestion. So digestion completed here in the ileum. Okay, completed. It's at the ileum. And absorption will also happen in ileum. Okay, after that, the uh, food, whatever food that is not uh, absorbed, okay, absorption happens here in the ileum, whatever that's not absorbed will enter the um, large intestine. Large intestine, another name is called colon. Okay, the colon has got three parts. You will see there's one part going up. Okay, this, this part here is called the ascending colon, ascending colon. And then you have one that goes horizontally, which is called the transverse colon. Transverse colon. And the last part which comes down here, this is the descending colon. So you have three parts of the colon. Okay, at the beginning part of the colon, you will have a structure called the appendix, which is quite useless to us. So there's not known any known usage for human. In fact, when it gets inflamed, when it gets infected, you will have appendicitis. And you will have the doctor, you need, they have to go to the doctor to have a surgery done to remove the uh, inflamed appendix. Okay, then you have a cecum here. Cecum also has got not known uh, function in human, but it has uh, a lot of uh, function in the herbivores. It helps to digest the cellulose. Okay, so this is your colon basically. And in this colon, the food that is not needed will slowly solidify, becomes hardened, and you will find feces accumulated here, which is the rectum. So once it gets filled up, you will have the urge to remove your bowels, okay? To remove, to go to the toilet and to uh, remove your um, feces, okay? And this, you have muscles here, muscles here at the anus, which we call sphincter. They will contract and relax to allow it to come out. Okay, you also have sphincter actually here at the beginning part of your stomach here and also the ending part. This is to make sure your food does not travel backwards to your esophagus. Okay, so whatever food that is in your stomach doesn't go up. And also your the other one, this, this sphincter we call the pyloric sphincter will actually relax and allow the food to come into the duodenum. Okay, so basically this is the elementary uh, tract, elementary canal. Let's look at the structures. The other structures be salivary gland. These are the organs that help to uh, uh, allow uh, what do you call the digestion to happen. Then you have stomach, which produces pepsin and renin enzymes. Then the next one, pancreas, which produces three types of enzymes we will see later on. And also you have uh, enzymes relate, uh, being produced in the small intestine. Liver here, liver here carries a lot of act, uh, function, not only in digestion, but the storage, food storage, and also to convert your, to deamination, to break down your excessive protein into amino acids. Uh, break down your protein into aminos, uh, we call the urea. Then you will have gallbladder, which stores the bile, 
Okay, the bile is not produced in the gallbladder actually. So the bile, the gallbladder is actually to store the bile, but actually the bile is produced from the liver. Okay, so here let's go back to this last part here. The types of digestion. So that that will be the structure. Now the types of digestion. Digestion. There are actually two types of digestion. Two types. One is a physical digestion, and the other one is a chemical digestion. Okay, what is the meaning of digestion in the first place? It is a process which breaks down large and complex pieces of food into smaller and simple pieces. So why do we need to break them down? Because our body cells, you know, the membrane, which is very fine. So these nutrients, if they are in large molecules, they are not able to be absorbed into the body cell to be used. For example, if your food is in glucose, is in starch form, you cannot uh, make the glucose go into your cell and your cell cannot... Uh, get the glucose to produce energy from respiration. You need to break down your starch into glucose. So that is what is the key word is to breaking down. Break down is for digestion. Physical digestion means the digestion happens in the form of physically breaking up the food into smaller pieces. So it's, it's a mechanical breakdown. Mechanical breakdown means you actually use your mouth or parts of your organs or that to actually break it down into physically smaller pieces. And it involves chewing in the mouth and peristalsis along the esophagus and all along the elementary canal. Right now, chemical digestion. This one is the breaking down of phys this is a chemical breaking down using enzymes. You need enzymes to decompose the molecule, for example, starch, to get smaller molecules like glucose, so that this glucose can enter your body cell and can be utilized by your cell to produce energy. All right, okay, so basically it's like this. If this is your body cell, if your molecule is too big, let's say this is a molecule of starch, okay, starch, it is not able to enter, you need to make it into smaller units, which is called the glucose, then it will be able to go in, and then you will have respiration, and your body cells will be able to produce energy. Okay, alright, so today's lesson is until here. I will attach a worksheet later and you can fill it up and send it to me.